headphone users. Hello, Daryl Spice Jr. I see your face. Good, good. Um, so yeah, you're very clear, much clearer than uh, the previous callers. <laughs> so um, this is going to go like a, a CB style, like I explained before, because we have the speakers so we can all hear you and then it feeds back into the microphone. Um, okay. Oh, and I see you have your Tesla hat on. Very excellent. Oh, yeah. Um, so, okay, I think I have you too low. There we go. Okay, so welcome to the uh, stream. Welcome to the Stellathon. Thank you so much for... Uh, yeah, thank, thanks for having me. It's uh, been looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, so um, obviously you have uh, some involvement in Stella and you talk with um, the Stella developers and you, I'm sure you contribute code. And because you are part oh of God. the um, consortium of CDF, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you're the D, the Daryl, and the CDF, and the CDFJ. So you must uh, work fairly closely um, um, uh, developing Stella or, or working with Stella and updating the, the code and making sure that it uh, plays as closely to the real hardware as possible. Uh, yeah, not as much as I used to. Uh, back in 96, I actually ported Stella to run under OS2. Yeah, and I, I maintained the uh, OS2 version up until 2000. And okay, because probably after, OS2 is after, not as popular uh, as it uh, once was. Yeah, <laughs> and not long after that, I had switched over to using the Macs. And since somebody else already had uh, the Mac version, I didn't you know, keep up with it. Mm -hmm. but, so probably... But, you're more now in like um, passing on information about incompatibilities or or things that you see that have gone awry when you're developing your games. Yeah, um, you know when, when we did like the the DPC plus, I, you know, I wrote the code for Stella for that, and you know uh, I think Fred found the ARM com uh, emulation that we use in Stella. You know before that when I was developing. Um, Stay Frosty 2, it was really hard um, because there was no way to debug it because you couldn't run it under Stella. And so yeah, I, that would yeah, be so very I, annoying. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. So yeah. you'd have to be yeah. transferring it to the Harmony cart and seeing if it runs. Or... Yeah, exactly. And I actually would do things like have my phone record my monitor to see what things were doing so I could frame step through it to figure out bugs. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness, that sounds yeah. incredibly, incredibly tedious. Yes, it was. So it was very, I was very happy once we were able to get the ARM emulation running under Stella. Stella. Oh yeah, I guess because you wouldn't be able to do any break codes, you wouldn't be able to analyze the, um, the what's in RAM and what's happening. Uh, you just have to play the game and then it crashes and you're like, okay, well, why? Exactly, exactly. And it, um, you know, but, um, you know, and working on Stella is actually how I ended up doing my first homebrew. Because um, back when I was did it, there were a few homebrews done in the 90s. And we included some of them with Stella when we distributed Stella. We had a great, you know, agreements with the people who wrote them. And mm -hmm. then um, I think it was Christmas 2005, I was visiting my brother. And we hooked up the Atari and were playing it. Uh, warlords with my nephews and their friends and at first they were very like oh that's ugly why would we want to play this five minutes later you know they're all really into it yeah uh, warlords is is definitely one of the best multiplayer games ever created for the atari 2600 i played that to death back in the 80s and, and 90s because the the gameplay is just so so good and so tight and so much possibilities for alliances and and mm -hmm. so i can see why you were you were influenced to uh to to take that on and and update the graphics and and gameplay and make it closer to right right yeah and that was um and you know there's stuff in there that other people came up with that was that's a big part of what i like about the community is all the feedback and ideas like uh, the night that marches out at the end you know that that Dave came up with that. He did all the graphics for Medieval Mayhem. Excellent. 
Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, Spice C. Now that is uh, obviously it's a C-based um, coding uh, framework, and is that going to be for the um, for the ARM processor? I'm guessing. Yes, yes. It's it's basically going to be set up like but uh, Batari basic, but instead of writing your code in basic, you would write it in C. In C. So you're going to have a bunch of, um, say, built-in kernels, or people can make kernels for it so that it's uh, just like Batari basic. You kind of uh, put things in, and, and here's the kernel already, and you can divide your screen up into different... Yes, that's correct. And it's, it's taking a bit longer to get going than I was hoping. You know, life happens, and, you know... <laughs> It is what it is, you know, and so that's actually a big part of why I started the new uh, club at Atari Age for Harmony Melody development. And with that, what I'm going to try to do is set it up so that people who are a little better at doing the C stuff, they could just jump right in without having to wait for me to finish Spicy. Mm -hmm. So how is, um, how is the C developed right now uh, for ARM? Uh, games. Um, how do you compile it, and and how does that all work? Because I've I've never really researched into that. I mean, it's a because it's kind of you're kind of making two separate programs now, right? You're you're one you're making the program that runs on the chip, and you're making a program that runs on the Atari. And there's there's an interface. There's a talking back and forth between those two. Yes, that's correct. The um, yeah, you know, when when you write these games, you have to write. The, the code for the Atari because the ARM has no access at all to the internals of the Atari. And so over time, you know, we developed a way of going back and forth, communicating between the RAM. And so that's what I'm trying to bundle up to make it easier for other people to do. Okay. So very, uh, a streamlined process. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's, that's the, really yeah, good. The, yeah, when, when I first started, it was you know, a lot of trial and error, and we, we discovered better ways to do things over time. You know, like I'd, I wouldn't at all try to do stuff the way I did it for Stay Frosty 2, because we've learned much better techniques since then. And are you going to be uh, reworking Frantic as you develop Spice C? Is that... Is that kind of the the test bed yes. for for yes. working yeah. with it? Because that yeah. that would make yeah yeah. Because I'll need to have something to try out, and because what I need to do is like my my uh, sprite routines that do all the multiplexing that draw everything using the two sprites. I'll need to be able to test it, and so once I make that, which is part of the Spice C, then I will write the game logic that would be part of the frantic. And so I'll, I'll be doing, you know, a little of this, a little of that at the same time. And I'll, at the same time, I'll also be um, doing Timmy, which will be using different kernel options, which will, you know, need different um, sprite options and stuff. And, yeah. I'm, and I'm really looking forward to Timmy because back in, you know, back in the day when I had my Commodore 64, uh, Jumpman and Jumpman Jr. were like one of the heaviestly played games that I had on there. So it's that I'm really looking forward. To. Yeah, I'm, I'm really disappointed that that deal with ThinkGeek just vanished. Yeah, they, they had a, if I remember it was a hostile takeover or something. And they, you know, the people that we were working with weren't there anymore and stuff and it was just yeah you know, and now they've you know, was, now they've moved on and now they're shutting down their their e-store and now it's just going to be retail products so, right right you know, right it's right. i guess it has been a slow decline from from that point yeah yeah they were they were a bit pricey on their stuff i you know i bought stuff over time from them but they were they were quite proud of their products yeah <laughs> Yeah, it was extremely expensive to begin with when shipping to Canada. It was almost like yeah. impossible. Yeah. It's pointless to buy it because the shipping was just as much. But then the shipping came down. But uh, yeah, it's uh, interesting products they had there. Quite a variety of very geeky products. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's too bad that fell through because it looked like it was getting close to being done. And I guess they were financing uh, financing it. No, actually, we we never even got to that part of the discussions. Yeah, you know, they they approached us about starting the game, and so I, you know, I started figuring out how we were going to write it and stuff. So all all of the code is ready for me to reuse. No no conflicts or anything or anything. 
Oh, that's good. So you don't have any contract sign or anything. Right, well, that's right, good. Right, it didn't get right. up to that point. So you just have to... I think you already changed the, the graphics from something that looked like ThinkGeek graphics already, didn't you? Uh, the only thing I really changed was the logo at the bottom. It used to have a ThinkGeek logo with the little brain symbol on top, and now it just shows the Spiceware. Spiceware. Yeah, so that would have been the only conflict, really, right, um, right, that you needed right, to change. Right. So that's that's good. So I want to thank you so much for donating all the plethora of of games and the posters and um, very rare items too, actually, like the the clear carts. That's that's amazing. Yeah, that 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 happened to be just a, a perfect timing situation. My parents had decided to downsize and moved into a smaller house and gave me back all the stuff I'd set them up with that you know my nephews and stuff would play whenever they were visiting grandma and grandpa. And I'm like, what am I gonna do with these? I don't need extra copies. And then this happened, so I thought, well, this is a perfect, perfect opportunity to help with the community and stuff. Yeah, really great timing. So I wanna thank you so much for that. And, and they're doing really well in the, uh, the auctions and the auctions will be three days long, so they'll go right, right, even right, higher right. for sure. So those are, those are yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> By the way, I have to say I love your lava lamp. Oh, um, oh in, in the uh, background. Um, not actually a lava actually lamp. A lava it's lamp. Um, um, like a little electrical like lightning type thing. Um. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see it. It doesn't come out that clear with us. Is this your office that you work from? Yeah, I actually work, yeah, out, of I actually work out of my house. I, I work for a I small company a small in the space company industry. In the space industry. The, uh, wow. that I work on is uh, used to actually design spacecraft, like Messenger that went to Mercury was designed with our software. Nice. That's wow. unbelievable. That's amazing. Uh, I can understand uh, the Tesla hat makes even more sense. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I um, actually, I, I was in uh, Al uh, from Atari Age. He gave me a ride in his Model S back, I think it was around 2015 or so. And at the time, I was actually looking at what my next car was going to be. I'd, I'd had a couple Honda S2000s and just didn't know what I wanted to get next. And I was debating like a Z4 and stuff. And and um, he was driving around the Texas Hill Country, even taking sharper turns than I would have in my little sports car. And it just blew me away. And then he showed me on the screen how the uh, supercharging worked. And I realized that I could take road trips in it, like to Wisconsin, which I'll be doing in a um, few weeks. I've got a wedding to go to. And, you know, I, and at that time, I couldn't have made it down to my sister's in Corpus Christi. Uh, there wasn't enough range and there wasn't charging between there, but with my three, you know, both, you know, it can go far enough and there's charging now. Yeah, both um, both Darcy and I have uh, electric vehicles as well. We both have the uh, the Volt. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, so we're very, very happy with them because we, like, I, I live in Vancouver mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we can drive... I, we can drive anywhere right. and we, we haven't right. touched we don't go to the gas station anymore it does have an engine but we just don't use it oh, so okay. it, yeah, I mean okay. yeah. I mean once you've driven an electric car and I'm sure you can attest to this it just it feels like you're driving in the future it's it's done uh, um, gas gas consuming cars are over yeah yeah it, it definitely is a game changer right so, you know, I haven't been to a gas station other than to like get a soda or something in uh, what, 13, 14 months. Bicycle tires. Sorry? You I had to fill up my bicycle tires, so I oh, would okay. look at it. Yeah, I've got an air pump in the garage, so yeah, I don't have to go out for that. Uh, uh, mine, mine's a little battery operated one. It actually looks like a cordless drill. Yeah, it works, works pretty good. Good. Yeah, so I, I wanted it a Tesla, but it's just just a little bit too out of the price range, and and uh, it wasn't the price range; well, it was the what was availability, it? which was oh, I probably wouldn't it have wasn't, one. I'd probably be true. maybe getting one. Yeah, we now. bought 
we bought ours we bought ours just before I think Tesla's threes were available in Canada. Uh -huh. So it's like, uh -huh. well, my, and we weren't on the list. So, and we weren't yeah. on the list, and yeah. and my car had been like, no, this is this it's broken breaking down. It's done. I'd yeah. had it for yeah. like. 15 years I w I'd driven as far as I could yeah so it's like yeah. now it's the time to look to the yeah yeah my old uh, s2000 was an 05 and at the start of last year I think I spent 3,000 repairs on it and you know just things were starting to break left and right even like the AC knob you turn the knob and the knob shattered you know it was just like okay <laughs> So, yeah, the, the and, repair and, repair bills on my old car were way way more than financing a new car. Yeah, like mm, way yeah. more. It's outrageous. It, it just was too much, and it's, yeah. it was time. Yeah. Make of these companies, though. I mean, things aren't made to last anymore because yeah. we're in this consumer sort of like rhythm of every three yeah. to sort of like you were six years. You're supposed to get a new appliance and but, anything. But right. the thing about cars right. is that when you buy a car you are getting a spectacular package deal. Like you, re <laughs> you really are. Like, buying a full car is way cheaper than buying the parts. Oh, right? yeah, like right, them right. putting it all together, they're all, it's all, it's, you know, the, yeah, the manufacturing computers. process is so efficient compared to any part that you have to replace. Yeah. It's, it's so much more expensive to replace a part. Like, and not in a scammy way, just like in a real way. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. To be a car salesman, Darcy, that's amazing. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> For um, the low price. <laughs> is there anything? Uh, Lem Callister is asking something there. It's um. Good job for us. Thank you so Quest much. Questions Spice. from the audience. Yeah, please. I just happened to. Yeah, you know, I've got that on the other monitor, and uh, yeah, there there's not much space left at all in Stay Frosty too. Yeah, mo oh. most of the games I'm getting down to bytes free. <laughs> I think that's how it always works. You always fill whatever yep. void yep. is given to you with projects. It's right. like, oh, right. I have as 10 you units. I think I will use 10 units. Yeah, as, as you free up space, you end up adding new features. Yeah, yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I should be asking for questions <laughs> from the audience beforehand. Yeah, but is there anything else that you wanted to add uh, about pro projects coming up or... Um, just, just things in general you want to talk about the Atari 2600 uh, scene. Are, are you going to be uh, going to Portland Retro Gaming Expo? Because I think the first time I ever went there is when I first met you, and yeah, uh, you don't, yeah. you won't remember me, but um, I got you to, I got you to sign Medieval Mayhem. I think it, uh, yeah, I bought it at the Atari Age booth. Yeah, that would have been uh, 2013, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that was a lot of fun. I've been back once since. Uh, won't be this time because uh, of the wedding coming up. I'm I'm taking a couple weeks off to do a road trip to Wisconsin for that. Well, that'll be a terrific time no matter what. Yeah. 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 So yeah. is this your yeah. first big road trip with your test? Uh, with, yeah, the furthest I'd gone so far was to uh, Fort Benning in Georgia. And that, um, you know, I don't, I don't remember exactly how long that took. We, we stopped overnight on the way and then the next day it was just uh just a few more hours to get there my uh nephew's now a tank driver in the army and we had gone for his graduation from basic training uh, oh wow daryl you have a fascinating family i wish i could have like a <laughs> dinner party at your house and just hear about all these things <laughs> tank drivers and designing space yeah uh <laughs> software is fascinating stuff yeah, and uh, Dad was a helicopter pilot. He uh, flew President Nixon back way back when. No way. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's crazy. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing your next your next thing um, in terms of the Atari Twenty Six Hundred realm is is Spice C that you'd be working on. I guess. Yeah, that, that's the the big thing that I'll be working on next, and you know the games that I'm going to be finishing will be as part of finishing Spice C. Mm -hmm. and, so frantic uh, and, and uh, frantic and Timmy. right frantic and Timmy, and I'll probably do something um, that uses the bitmaps, where we get that 128 pixel bitmap screen. Mm. Okay, very yeah. cool. Oh, there's yeah. another question from the audience. Hey, Daryl, are you building your spicy framework around Fred's default DPC plus ARM header, ARM header core? I don't know what that means, but you might. Uh, it's it's being built around the CDFJ, which is our the, the most recent uh, driver that we use with that. 
the main reason is DPC plus when we, you know, when we first designed that, it was basically an expansion of the original DPC. We didn't even consider ARM support at the time. And that was just kind of tacked on and it's uh, it's a bit kludgy to, to use the ARM with the DPC plus. And once the, the ARM code runs, you end up having the 6507 do a lot of preparation before the kernel that takes scan lines worth of time. And when we developed the bus and the CDFJ, we made it so all of that stuff now happens in the ARM code rather than the 6507. Mm, so a lot of off, and, offloading onto the ARM as much as possible, which makes... Right. And, and the other benefits are the driver is smaller. Um, the DPC plus driver is 3K in size. And the, the CDFJ is 2K. So you end up with more space for your game, more RAM, because the driver has to be copied into RAM uh, because of uh, for performance. It runs faster from the RAM than it does in the ROM. Yeah, I, I think it's um, ROM access takes four cycles and RAM takes one, if I'm not mistaken. That is a significant saving. Yeah, yeah. And um, let's see, we got... Um, Oh yeah, the oh, yeah. LG2K ROM limit is basically what what the uh, Harmony was developed with. I think that's the the amount of memory that was included in that ARM processor that was used. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and also um, I don't know how much um, you've looked at the Uno cart, but there's there's an ARM on there as well, but it's it's accessed differently. I don't know anything about that, but I don't know if you've ever. Taking a look at the Uno cart, has I, some I have not, and some disc um, Yeah, I, I've not looked at it yet. Um, I've, every once in a while, I I'll look into the discussion about it, but it, you know, it, it's using a newer version of the ARM, so it runs faster. It has more ROM abilities. I think also a lot more RAM. And you know, part of what I'm looking at is to get the games produced. We already have the Melody, which is basically the Harmony without the SD card slot. Yeah, exactly, because after you make the game, you have to think about production right. and cost of right. production and having the melody cards already ready to go and just slam right. the, the right. game into there. It's such a, an easy process, and I think it would have to, the, uh, the, the Uno cart would have to get up to that level where it's, it's almost plug-and-play uh, and for a good price to, to, because you'd have to rework everything for the new ARM processor, right? Yeah, you know, the memory map itself is different, I believe. You know, like where, where things end up in memory is, you know, totally different. And that's, um, I think they've been able to, in emulation, get like DPC plus stuff running on that where it like translates addresses and stuff. But I don't, I don't know if they've actually released it where you could just dump one of the Harmony games onto it and have it run okay. No, I don't think I've heard that yet. And and plus, they would ha also have to work with Stella and get that working in, in the emulators, so it'll be easier to develop on it as well, because right now the only way I've been able to showcase games that have been de developed for the Uno cart is to actually just play them on the Uno cart and, and hope it works, And because I can't play it on the computer. So it is, it's, a bit, it's a bit tricky right now because it's so new. So I think it needs a lot more maturity before uh, mass use by developers are going to happen. Yeah, that, that definitely makes sense. And you know, it, it'd be neat to see what we could do with it once all that work happens. But, mm -hmm. but at the moment, you know, I'll, I'll stick with what, you know, what we can get games produced. And that's, you know, that's like the same reason that I've not really done anything else with the bus stuffing. Yeah, yeah it, it's really cool technology, but not being able to get the games released is a major disincentive to continuing stuff. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much for, for coming on the uh, Stellathon. And thank you, of course, for all the massive donations of all the games um, for raising funds for Stella for, you know, con continued development and for everybody out there playing these games on their computer. And of course, Stella goes into a whole bunch of hardware as well, like the 
the Retron 77 so people can hook it up to their TVs and play it on HDMI rather than going through what I have, right. which is right. like uh, RGB output to a, a $500 upscaler, and that's that's crazy. Like it's it's much easier just to buy one of these off the shelf, and the community has been able to make this a viable product now. So, yeah, thank you, thank you for everything. Yeah, and, and thank you. You know, the um, you know, with your channel, that's definitely quite helpful. Gets a lot more people interested in it. You know, it's, you know, I, I know I like to watch. I don't always get to watch because you're streaming during the day when I'm working. You know. but most, yeah, most but of us here don't have re regular jobs. We have very strange jobs, all of us. Oh yeah, we're, <laughs> so we we're get really to weird people. We get to play like uh, you know, he's a writer and we're filmmakers and. And uh, so, we're always working and never working. Yeah, that's exactly. that's 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 how our life. Cool. So thank you cool. so much for coming on on the stream, and um, yeah, we yeah. will talk to you later. Have a good one. Have a good one. Bye bye.